Baldor coming at you with another video. I had a lot of good feedback on my video where I talked about the things I learned in the last five years. So I'm going to, to go a little bit more into that. This is going to be more of things that wise people taught me that I have taken and applied throughout those five years and has worked very well. All right. So stay tuned. Here we go. So before we get into that, clearing up, cleaning up the shop a little bit. Starting to look more like a welding shop in here now. I got a fire extinguisher, first aid kit, and of course, below the fire extinguisher, a OSHA approved set of gas, of uh, full gasoline cans, some without caps. <laughs> I done got the yard cleaned up here. See, here's my burn pile to where I can back projects around here and utilize both sides of my welding shop for working on people's projects. You can see, we can park a project there and work on it. And we can park a project here and work on it. And 350, got some work done on it. We got lids on the boxes finally. Check that out, woo, that's hot as hell. Wow, them boxes are hot. Been sitting in the sun all day. But yeah, there are lids on them. They don't work yet, but we're making progress on this truck. And we finally fixed a leaky grease seal in the back and redid the, the brake self adjuster. So, uh, fingers crossed, hope and pray we don't have to get back into that drum and work on it again. So long before and during, I was running my welding business, before I ran my welding business and during running my welding business, I learned a lot of good stuff from people who were in the trades of some sort running their own businesses and whatnot. And I kind of want to make this video to, I can even, I even got everything I learned sourced here so I can tell you exactly who I learned it from. The cool thing is, I cannot sit here and say everything I got was all by me. I didn't learn everything. I didn't come up with all the ideas myself. I had people help me along the way. I had people teach me along the way. I had other welders give me advice and other welders kind of take me under them for a little while to show them how they do things. And I've taken and pulled all from all these different sources to basically put together something that works for me. So we're going to get started with, I'll say the first person on my list um, who has really taught me a whole lot and almost chronologically the first person I apprenticed under, um, Steve Prescott. He's a farrier. If you don't know what a farrier is, that's the guy that puts shoes on horses. That's a very difficult job. It's a very skilled job. I would say it's harder than welding. I apprenticed uh, maybe about a year and I decided this sucks. I hate this. That's why you apprentice for a while, right? It's a free way to go. I hate this. I want to do something else. But, and I think he knew that. He, he was just gonna let me he was just gonna let me go until I figured he was just gonna let me ride with him until I figured out that I actually hated it and he was actually very happy to hear I got into welding because being a farrier I hate to say it's a dying thing it's a hard job it's very hard on your body I mean it, it's a tough job but he's really good at it so one of the first things he told me I was working with him riding around um, bad and cheap tools will make your life miserable and make you want to give up and quit. He told a story of a farrier who went to school and everything and didn't have the money to go get all the nice tools, right? So instead he got all the cheap farrier tools from like tractor supply and whatnot. It made his life so difficult and so miserable that he couldn't, he, he just couldn't bear to keep going anymore to where he could afford the good tools and he gave up. It's true. Like, if I were to try to run my entire business forever off of crappy Harbor Freight welders that were always breaking and not running hot enough and, and, and I'm getting stuff returned because I'm not welding it because I have machines that can't weld it good enough, I'd get frustrated and give up. Be like, oh, I just can't do this. I'm going to find something else, right? Another thing he told me, try to work eight hours a day. Even if you're not working directly for a customer, stay busy for eight hours a day. Clean up your shop, work on your truck, organize tools, 
balance your books, do something, do whatever it takes, do something to stay working for eight hours a day. You just got to, got to stay busy, all right? You, you can't, you know, oh, I did two hours of work today, all right, show's over, I'm done, you know, I'm calling it, I'm calling it a day. No, clean the shop, organize some tools, work on some of your own welding projects you need to do for building stuff around the shop. Like, I'm working on the 350 right now, and I'm taking an old table and converting it into something different for me to use, you know, stuff like that. Um, a good used truck is cheaper in the long run than a new one. Oh, I know I'm going to get some hate for that because people love their new trucks. I'm not saying that you shouldn't have a new truck. I'm saying mathematically over 10 years, a used truck is going to be cheaper than a new one. Sit down, do the math, figure out how much it costs to replace general components on your new truck versus general components on a 15, 20 year old truck and how much you're paying in insurance on your new one versus your old one and how much you're paying on licensing and registration and initial purchase between the two and cost of repairs between the two. Over 10 years, even if I have to replace the engine in my F-150 twice, it's still cheaper in the long run than a new truck. It would take about five transmission changes in my F-150 before it'd be remotely close to being worth owning a new truck. Now, Steve Prescott, I apprenticed under him, then I went to welding school, you know, a lot happened in between that, but then I went to welding school, my instructor, Alan Farrington, we've been welding a very long time and teaching a very long time too, uh, he's a CWI, certified welder and all sorts of different stuff, runs his own welding business, very, 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 very smart person, and I'm very, I'm very proud to say that I learned to weld from him. You know, it's a great thing as I, he, he's known in the county by people, so people are like, oh, who'd you learn from? I go, I learned from Alan Therrington. And people go, oh yeah, I know Alan, he's great. We love Alan, so I'm very proud to say I learned from him. And he had a lot of good stuff. He's the majority of this list right here. Um, he had this saying he always said at the end of class. It was, remember guys, practice makes better. It doesn't always make perfect. But you got to practice, and, it, and every time you practice, even if you get a little worse with that practice, you made a mistake, figure out how to fix that mistake, and now you're better, right? Don't buy things you can't afford with cash. If you have to put it on, if you have to put a welding machine on a credit card or several credit cards, you probably don't need it. Don't buy used welders. He was always yelling at me about used welders that I had bought and was trying to fix and going to him, hey, hey, uh, M Mr. Therrington, I can't figure out, I can't figure out why this welding machine ain't working. He'd be like, you know why it ain't working? Because it's used, it's old, it's worn out. What I have learned is used welding machines are not like used trucks and old welders are not like old trucks. Used welding machines, people get rid of them when they are worn slam out. People don't just drop a welding machine to go get a new one. They run them into the ground to where they are unusable. And they, they tweak it and fix it and do the bare minimum to just go kick it out on the Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist and boom! There you go. You got someone's lemon that doesn't work and you pay $4,000 for it. When you could have just spent $600 more and gone and bought a brand new one with a five year basically no matter what warranty from Miller. Be versatile. Be able to weld anything and everything in the field. This is something he told us all the time. That if you're going to get out there and run your own business, you want to be able to do everything. You show up on a site. I might be there to weld carbon steel. But what if I'm there and somebody working on the other part of the site is like, Hey man, I got this aluminum thing I need you to weld. Can you do it for me? You want to be able to go, yeah, sure, let me go to my truck and get this. right? You don't want to be like, oh, I don't have my aluminum equipment today. You want all that on your truck. Even if it's not, even if like... You don't have your primary aluminum stuff on the truck. You want to basically be able to show up on site and do whatever. You want to you want to keep stuff for stainless, aluminum, cast iron, and of course your regular mild steel on the truck all the time. All right. Even if it's not your primary stuff for that, you want to still be able to do it if you need to. Like I keep brazing, I keep brazing rods and soldering rods on the truck just for little little stuff that might show up that somebody might bring me. Because, hey, it's a, quick, it's a quick 40 bucks. Like, man, yeah, sure, I'll do it, 40 bucks. 
all right, yeah, whatever. Bam, just like that. And now people know you, right? Keep your expenses as low as possible. And by that, you're not, you don't have credit card payments because you didn't go buy a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need at that time. So you keep your expenses low. You built a shop, a small shop on your property instead of went out and rented a really big one. Keep your expenses low. What I did, I have a shop on my property. I, I can go rent a big one. I don't want to spend that 1500 bucks a month. I would rather put that money back into my business and build stuff and buy tools and equipment with that 1500 a month because that's a lot of money. And that's actually, that, that's cheap. I'm, that's a cheap shop. Uh, I'm probably around here, a good shop is probably looking at $2,500 a month for a good shop around here. And that's a lot of money to be forking out every month, right? Unless you need it because you cannot operate out of your property. It's just better keep them expenses low. You bought a used truck straight out with cash, keep them expenses low. Keep those end of the month expenses low. Own, don't rent. Dip, don't get into debt for tools. Just talked about that. Keep a cash reserve for when things get dry. You run well in business or any business whatsoever, you know. It does this. There's no steady, we're just busy, 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 right? No. It is, for me, it's March, April, May, October. Wah! Just kind of this weird little peaks like like from like I have basically I have nothing between Thanksgiving and New Year's like nothing I can pretty much count I'm not gonna be working Thanksgiving the New Year's it's or, or I'll be doing the very minimum that's just how it how it's been every year I've been in business so keep a cash reserve to get you through those slow times keep practicing so you don't get rusty when things get slow and you're not welding all the time get out there and just practice Pick, pick something and practice. Do a, take a piece of angle iron, set it in front of you, weld, weld. Or set it down, or set it down flat if you need to, if you just feel lazy that day. Just freaking weld, keep going. Take a couple pieces of flat bar, bloop, weld them together. Do something so you don't get rusty. Test your skills. When you get new processes, or it's been a while since you've done a process, take two, take two pieces of plate, weld them together, cut it, bend it. Just see where you're at. Test yourself. Find out where you're at. Find out where you need to improve. It's much easier said than done, but we should all be doing it. Now, we'll go on to Zeus. He's been on my channel before. He has the big black F-350 Ironhide. I've worked with him a lot and I've learned a lot from him. So one of the things I learned from him, use flux core wire welders wire feeders when practical. Oh my god, that makes life so easy. Flux core welds. I'm going to get burnt in the comments for this. I don't care. Flux core is just as good as stick when done properly. All right? Especially when you get in the seismic wire, it's better than a 7018. Yes, T8 seismic wire is better than a 7018. Suck on that, guys. I'm sorry. It's the truth. Go look at the specs. The specs don't lie. There's, so, Flux core, use it when practical. If you're going to be out there all day and they are and they are, you know, operator's discretion for welding, or if you open up the um, or you open up the WPS and it says um, operator's discretion, or it says E70 e, any 70 series electrode, run with it. They're letting you pick. Go for it. Make your life easier. Use a plasma cutter instead of an oxyacetylene torch in the field when able to. Oh, that makes life so easy. Plasma gouging is so nice, so clean. Plasma cutting is so quick and so clean. It makes life so easy. And he literally, Zeus uses a plasma cutter in place of an oxyacetylene torch almost all the time. Every time I work with him, I've never seen that man pull out a oxyacetylene torch. It's always plasma. Gouging half inch, plasma, plasma, plasma. That Hypertherm Power Max 45 is a beast. It can almost replace your oxyacetylene torch. Another thing he taught me, keep a lot of consumables on the truck. Not just what you need for the day, a lot. Keep 
months supplies. Like I got a box, one of those ammo cans of nothing but grinding wheels. Bought a whole bunch. I don't have to worry about running out and I don't have to worry about, oh man, I gotta run to the well and supply store every week or every other week to keep buying stuff. No, 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 no. Buy a crap ton of it. You know, they got a little 25 packs of cutting wheels. Go grab, grab two or three 25 packs of grinding wheels. Go to the shelf where they got the grinding wheels and just go whoop and just take them all. Take them all. When I got my Biden bucks, I didn't need the Biden bucks, so I took them Biden bucks to Robert's Oxygen and I bought a crap ton of grinding wheels and consumables and welding rods. A whole bunch. So I can keep them either as much as I can fit in the truck and what I can't fit in the truck stays in the shop. Just a bunch of it. So I don't have to worry about running out. So I can keep that, I can keep going and going and going. I'm not spending time at the welding supply store. Keep spare parts. If you have a truck that you know, or a welding machine that you know likes to eat a certain part, or a certain part likes to break, or you have a have a wire feeder that has a certain part that likes to break or likes or likes to get lost, keep that in your truck. In my case, for my F-150, it's the ignition control, the ignition box, ignition control box, and the starter solenoid are the two things I keep spares of in the truck because those old Fords, the 70s, are infamous for burning out the um, ignition control con ignition control module and the starter solenoid they're infamous for that everything else is great and if you have, it loses a few fluids here and there but things like that um, if you have a tendency to lose certain parts to your suitcase keep those spare parts buy them because usually you're gonna have to wait for your welding supply store to get those in they don't normally keep them in stock so it's better to keep just buy them and keep them in the truck so oh, I lost it whatever keep going Noah Learn a lot from Noah. I've hung out with him so much. Me and him are usually on the same page about so much. Some of this stuff I probably did learn from Noah before, and it was just kind of back and forth and whatnot. But the one thing he, he showed me, and I'll tell you, will make your life so much easier, is QuickBooks self employed on your phone. I would show you, but I'm using my phone to videotape. QuickBooks self employed links to your bank accounts and your, and your credit cards and everything, it links everything together. It, help, it basically is like having a secretary for keeping track of all your receipts and purchases and mileage right there on your phone. It is like $10, $12 a month. It's worth the money. It's way cheaper than what it costs to pay somebody to sit there and keep track of all that. It's dirt cheap in comparison. It'll make your life so much easier. So as you get moving in your business, you really need to think about something like QuickBooks Self-Employed. Because I can literally sit there two minutes at lunch, bam, 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 and all my books are balanced for the entire week. Done. Everything's ready to go. And taxes last year only took me 15 minutes. Yes, my taxes only took 15 minutes last year because TurboTax, um, QuickBooks Self-Employed automatically uploads and translates everything into TurboTax. Boom. Automatically transfers over, file, just like that. Taxes for the whole year, done in 15 minutes. You cannot beat it. Russ Deedman, learned a lot from this guy. This guy is a freaking nuclear pipe welder. He drives a big old Dodge 2500. He's all over the place. I mean, this guy is getting it. I mean, I love, I love Russ to death. I gotta get him on my channel sometime. But this dude, he is crazy. He's always making money. He is everywhere. Me and him have, cha have you know, handed customers back and forth. I can't get to this. Can you do this? Can you do this? You know, he's just. He's just one of those awesome people like that. And, I, and I've got the awesome opportunity basically straight out of school to go work with this guy. And he was he's an awesome teacher and just a phenomenal person. But one of the first jobs I did with him was pipe handrails. And y'all seen I do, I started to get into doing pipe handrails if you follow my Instagram. So he taught me how to do pipe handrails and he bought the pipe notcher from Harbor Freight and he sticks it in a vise on the truck and just wee notches pipe just like that and uses a porta band for cutting it and everything. It's fantastic. It'll make your pipe handrail so much neater, so much cleaner, and so much faster. Another thing he taught me when it comes to those pipe handrails is yes, it breaks the rules. Bear with me. Downhill 7018. I know that's breaking the rules, but a 7018 does not have a lot of spatter. And when you're doing one inch schedule 40 pipe, 
you go uphill, it's gonna dig in a whole lot. You have a lot of undercut and there's gonna be a lot of grinding. So you take 7018, push it downhill and then downhill on the other side. Yes, that's breaking a rule, I get it, but it's a handrail, no one cares. Take it, and now you have very, very little grinding. I even tried to use flux core in this manner, it just spatters too much. Remember, handrail's gotta be smooth, and somebody's gonna have to go back and grind all that down. I may have a helper to go, here you go, buddy, here's a grinder, have fun. But I don't wanna pay him to sit there all day grinding if I can help it. Or what if I can't get a helper that day and I'm the sorry sucker who's got to grind it all, right? Make it easier for yourself, which will make it easier for your people under you. Utilizing, he, he likes to use 11018s and 8010 rods. And he used that for a heavy structural. This guy, he now, Russ, he goes and he fixes big machinery. Like, I'm talking multi-million dollar chippers, massive stuff. He is the guy when it comes to really big equipment, fixing really big equipment around here. And he uses 8010s for, he'll use 8010s for roots on everything. And this is all preheat. I mean, he'll sit there for an hour preheating stuff. And then he'll do inner pass heating and post cooling and heating and cooling when he uses these rods. But he's very, very good at it, and he does not have people come back going, hey, it broke, right? So he uses 11018s and 8010 rods, and that's something I think everybody should learn how to use, how to utilize those in heavy equipment repair. Keeping a TIG rig with you at all times. He, he, he taught me, and I'm a believer in it, keep a TIG rig on your truck all the time. You may take other stuff off the truck, but keep a TIG rig. You never know what you're going to run across. This goes back to what um, Alan Therrington said about being versatile all the time. Keep a TIG rig with you. You never know when you're going to need it. Keep a fan on the truck. In the summertime, you need a fan. I found that when I'm working inside of those refrigerator trailers welding aluminum, that, that, that smoke and stuff from that aluminum wire and burnt argon builds up in that box trailer and it gets to you after a while. So even just opening doors and sticking a fan out there just to circulate air through that trailer, or even just setting a fan there to blow the flux core smoke out of the way. Doesn't have to be a big fan, doesn't have to be a fancy fan. Just a fan. Keeping an umbrella on the truck at all times. That's the, that's the pipe welder thing right there. And I, I, start, I do it every summer, I keep an umbrella on the truck. I even got a dedicated spot for my umbrella and I'm gonna buy me an actual pipe liners umbrella this year because I use my El Cheapo Walmart one so much and it's like, yeah, it's time to go get a real one now. That actually is something I utilize. Um, knee pads. Russ, great guy, he's old. One thing he said, knee pads. I didn't believe him. I'm working on all these flatbed trailers, you know, and gravel yards, constantly on my knees, getting up under there and welding. After a week of that, I felt like an old man. I was hurt hurting so bad my knees my ankles just everything hurt and I think I got permanent damage from it so I went and bought um, black stallion not black stallion Tillman makes fire resistant welders knee pads they're awesome you can crack all the jokes you want to about knee pads ha 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 I thought we all I thought we all got promoted duh, 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 and all that immature bullshit but at the end of the day, the immature people not wearing them are going to be having knee problems, and the mature people like me wearing them are not are gonna are not going to have knee problems. I think I said that right. Yeah, the immature people are going to have knee problems. Mature people are not going to have knee problems. There you go. I'm gonna make sure I got that right. All right. Last but not least, the greatest teacher. Ha ha. Me. No, actually, you know that's just that's me being full of shit right there. But. One thing I'm gonna say, if you cannot teach yourself, no one can teach you, all right? So these are things I learned and I taught myself and I'm still teaching myself to a certain degree. Buy name brand tools. Buy once, cry once, right? It, it, it sucks to buy the Milwaukee tools, it sucks to buy the Miller tools because I know I can go get a Royobi or an Everlast that's gonna be much cheaper but I know I'm gonna cry about it when that thing breaks. And I might I'll only cry during that initial purchase of that Miller or that Milwaukee, right? Mag drill is a must. 
Some people don't keep one on the truck. I do. Every one of my rig trucks is going to have a mag drill on it. You know why? I ain't got to sit there with a hand drill and put my back into it or drill up like this. It just saves so much time and so much wear on your back. It'll make your life so much easier. You don't need a big truck. I don't need this F-350 here. It's nice. Really? I, I stick with F-150s. And maybe a short bed F-250 would do really, really good for what I do. But I just happen to have a couple F-150s, so I use them, right? I use what I have. They're good trucks. Why would I sell my good gray F-150 to go get a eh, F-250? It just doesn't make sense. So I use what I have. I'll put better brakes in that truck. I'll put um, some suspension upgrades in it. I'll stick the Champion Elite in that gray truck and a couple boxes. Boom, I have a second rig truck. And I only spent two, three hundred dollars making it into another rig truck versus spending four or five thousand going and getting another truck, right? Use what you have. Um, teach yourself. Well, I, already, I, I just talked about that. Um, learn from your mistakes and other people's mistakes. No one's perfect. You're so, you are probably going to have to go back and fix stuff that you, you fixed and it broke and you got to go back. It happens, okay? Any welder who gets on here and says, oh, I've never had to go back and fix anything I ever welded on. Uh, I fixed everything right the first time. Well, you're full of crap. I mean, you're so full of crap it stinks from here. You're a liar, a big liar. You, sometimes you got to go back and fix stuff. It happens, all right? Find out why, investigate, and fix it. And don't. And if it's your fault, don't charge a customer for it, all right? Be responsible. And you may be, you may be called out there because another welder had worked on it and their repair broke, and now you're having to fix their repair. Find out why theirs broke. Learn from their mistake. Find out why theirs broke. So when you're faced with repairing that particular item, you don't fall victim to the same thing they did. This is the most important one. I'm still teaching myself to this day and it's the most important thing I'm going to talk about today. It's so important. You got to make time for your family, your faith, and yourself. Before I got into this welding business, people would probably say I was one of the laziest people they'd ever known. Because as soon as I was done with a welding project at school, I guess it was instructor would be like, hey, go do this. I go weld it, here you go. My butt was sitting in the hallway on my phone. Believe it or not, I started my own welding business and I got I got so into it, I won't making time for anything else but my welding business. I have had to basically stop myself and go, no. And I will let I I've got I had these points where I was letting customers guilt me into working ridiculous hours and stupid stuff. So I have basically I gotta make time for myself, my family, and my faith. Like, Sunday, I'm not working Sunday. Why? Because I'm going to church. I'm not working Sunday. Unless it's an emergency and you're paying a lot to get me out there on Sunday. Right? That Sunday is where I go to church and I spend time with my family. Monday nights. Monday nights is when I, myself, I go to Civil Air Patrol. Monday night is my night. Monday 6 to 8 is my night night is where I go to Civil Air Patrol and I do something I like that's not work. And I and Wednesdays I take Wednesdays off. The two days I take off is Sunday and Wednesday and I actually work Saturday. So I work Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Those are the days I work so I can be available on weekends. So I take Sunday and Wednesday off. Wednesday is the day my wife usually has it off of work, so me and her go do something. I like when, even if it's just we're gonna ride to Chick Fil A and eat, and then go to Goodberries or whatever. That's Wednesday, even if it's just for lunch, or even if it's just me and her sitting around watching TV cooking. We're doing something together on Wednesday. Wednesday is our day for that. I'm not working on Wednesday. All right. So, those are the things I have learned, and people have taught me. And I have applied and has worked very well. The words of wisdom right here. This is absolute. What I just told you, I'm not trying to be 
cocky or arrogant or selfish or full of, or full of it or whatever, but what I just told you right now is gold. This right here. These are the keys to being successful. You might not have a brand new a brand new truck and a brand and the newest greatest welding machine, but you'll be successful and happy if you do this and you hold to this stuff I just told you. It's very important. Okay? So take it to heart. What all this stuff because this isn't just all coming from me. This is coming from very wise people who have been doing this so much longer than me. And that's why I sourced it out. These, these are wise people. They've been doing it for, they've been doing trade work and welding for so long. They know what they're doing. And I have taken it to heart and has made me happy and successful. So thank you guys for watching this video. If you like this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. And check out my other videos I have on my channel. And you guys have a fantastic day.